Many designers are often struggling when it comes to research when they're working on their first case studies or even on their first client projects. Well, there is a lot of ways to do research. Let me tell you about one that we do at Hype for every single time. I'm talking, of course, about the agile approach of building a product and then monitoring it and making small little changes based on the information that you get from users. So using analytics to modify, tweak and improve. We also do a lot of qualitative testing, which means basically talking to the users, but we're going to cover those in another video. Analytics. What comes to mind when you say analytics is Google Analytics, because, well, it has it in the name. But while Google Analytics is quite powerful and it gives you a ton of options, it's also extremely difficult to use. And sometimes I feel that it has too many options for easily parsing the information. There are new, smarter, and a lot easier analytics tools that you can use right now instead of Google Analytics. And what's even better is that they can give you a pretty nice visual output that you can use in your case studies or in your client project reports. Let's explore one of them today. This video is sponsored by BeUsable. BeUsable is a surprisingly powerful suite of analytics tools that reach out to me to test and try their products. Before agreeing to do this video, I wanted to know how much actual useful insight the tool provides, and I have to say that I was blown away by what I got. It's actually two tools, BeUsable itself and their BeUsable analytics tool, which I'm going to cover in this video as well. Let's start with their free analytics suite. I installed it by simply copying and pasting a JavaScript code that they generated into the code of the website and then basically an hour later we got our first results. You probably know me, I'm a sucker for details and I really love how they illustrated the customer journey and created those cute little characters on their landing page. Their names instantly stick. I mean, come on, who has never been a panic donut or a picky muffin? Doing it this way helps non-marketing people better understand user groups and how to actually read the analytics. So it's a very good thing in terms of the user experience of actually using the analytics. Aside from seeing the high level view of your stats, you can also see a journey view to see how people transition between your pages. This can help optimize those pages further to better connect with one another. It also auto groups the pages in my navigation categories, color codes them so it's clear and visible right away. With a one purpose site like our generator, we obviously don't have long journeys here, but I can't wait to test it on the upcoming 2.0 version of the Academy, especially on the onboarding and registration processes. It's just super clear. All right, but how does it stack up against Google Analytics? Well, we used a couple of analytics tools in the past, including Google Analytics. And while of course the Google offering is super powerful, it also is created in a very unfriendly way. There is tons of data, menus, and things to click that can feel pretty overwhelming. Beusable Analytics is a lot more user-friendly and it shows you things in a way where you can quickly understand what's going on. Oh yeah, people are moving to this page after spending around 4 minutes on this one. That simply makes sense and for most websites, you can simply start implementing the changes that you see from the analytics instead of still trying to decipher the data tables from Google. And what's best about it is that you can use it completely free. It has a free plan with 600,000 page views included and that is a lot. You likely won't use it up, well, unless your site gets really popular, but that is a good problem to have. Even with the free plan, you can get a ton of useful insights on how to improve your site, improve your portfolio, or improve your client project. Okay, now let's talk about BeUsable itself. BeUsable is an in-page analysis tool, which basically helps you get insight from what's going on on the page itself, so what people are doing. And you can use those insights directly to improve your website. One of my favorite features is the scroll heat map and the attention graph. Obviously our attention spans are much lower so it's really important to optimize our websites so people stay on them so they don't go away because they're bored. Based on averaging the amount people scroll on the website we end up with a heat map showing how many people just use the generator and how many people scroll to the articles at the bottom. Seeing that only a small number of users scroll to the very end of the site we can try to modify it hinting on how the articles and descriptions are useful. We may also put the main articles and videos above the description as most people entering the site already understand what glass morphism is. Pathplot is a tool showing mouse movement. It visualizes interactions such as visit duration, clicks and mouse movements on in-page elements to show the navigation flow. 
You can use pathplot on more complex sites and forums to see where people are having trouble and add helpful hints and guides there. Then use the tool again to see how it changed. This is something we'll definitely be implementing on our sites to help reduce user drop-off. You can also use that nice skeuomorphic knob on the right side to filter the users who converted, which means they clicked on the main CTA on the site and went further with the ones that didn't. That way you can see what was different and how you can optimize the flow further. Live heat map is probably my favorite because it gives you a lot of context. It overlays the heat map of engagement and the user clicks on the actual working website. So it's not a JPEG of the website with a heat map on top of it, but instead it's an actual working website that you can scroll through. This gives you a lot more room to see what was clicked where, as it looks exactly as when the user see it. It also works with hidden layers like accordions, hamburger menus and such, which gives even more context. This, along with the ability to filter by action type and device, simply gives you a much clearer image of what's exactly going on on the website than a smaller thumbnail in a window. Both of these are powerful on their own. But of course they gain a lot from being used together, that's simply synergy in action. You get a lot more insights if you combine them from both sources. What started as a simple test of a new tool on our generator website led me to actually installing it on the full website and the upcoming 2.0 version of Hype for Academy because I want to see what's going on and this basically works perfect for us. I'd recommend you try them out. The analytics suite is free, which is always great, but then the main tool gives you heat maps and some nice visuals that you can overlay and put in your case studies. Because one thing I found is that presenting user research to clients always gets them fixated on the heat maps. They're somehow mesmerizing, so adding them both shows off your research skills and also makes the report more interesting to read, more interesting visually. And you can get one month of their basic plan completely free by filling in a form in the description of this video and signing up to get a coupon code. That is a hundred thousand page views to analyze through and get some nice looking heat maps along the way. Let me know in the comments what analytics tool you use right now and how you use it. And as always, have a beautiful day.